uh, only doing this job because I have the opportunity to spend 60 days uh, recycling all my air and all my water and seeing how it might actually be to live in, in a spacecraft environment. So that type, those types of things are real exciting. The ultimate success of Project Mercury's manned orbital spaceflight program will result from the free world's concerted, concurrent efforts in scientific research and hardware manufacturing. Despite careful planning and design, malfunctions occur. The need for additional research and development is indicated by such failures. Data received for evaluation from this test on March 18, 1961 at Wallops Island with spacecraft 14 mated to a Little Joe launch vehicle pointed out need for improvement in several vital areas. Premature actuation of the escape rocket firing system prior to the spacecraft separation apparently was caused by the unscheduled closure of at least two of the spacecraft main clamp ring limit switches. Ground command separated the spacecraft and released the tower. The main and reserve parachutes were deployed. However, in spite of a descent rate 60% less than normal, the heat shield caused some damage in the area below the pressure bulkhead upon impact. After recovery, further investigation showed that only minor structural damage had occurred, and the spacecraft refurbishment for another flight was undertaken. At McDonnell Aircraft in St. Louis, the adapter ring fairing configuration was modified. Reducing its size improves the airflow around the spacecraft during powered flight. Components were fitted, welded, and riveted together. These sections were then carefully attached to the clamp ring fixture and labeled to ensure correct assembly. To eliminate recurrence of Little Joe 6's malfunction, arming relays were placed in the sequential system. These relays prevent a signal from the limit switches from firing the escape rocket motor until the clamp ring bolts have been detonated. Extensive vibration and acoustic testing assures quality limit switches for optimum operation during launch. Recovery of the spacecraft from the MR2 launch and subsequent inspection determined that some structural damage had occurred upon impact and the heat shield was lost during this stage of the operation. Space task group research led to a modification in the impact skirt support straps and the addition of retaining cables attached to the heat shield. A template fastened to the cable suspension ring aids an accurate location of the attaching holes. The titanium is tough and requires skill in drilling. A series of cables inside and these thin metal straps outside both connected to the heat shield were part of the STG design. Water stability testing of the new design model was conducted at the hydrodynamics facility at Langley. Qualification resulted from drop tests such as this. The operational stability of the reinforced lower bulkhead protection was confirmed. Six water drop tests with spacecraft number five retrieved from the MR2 mission, plus two land impact tests at the Wallops Island facility, showed that no structural damage was experienced. Evaluation of these tests verified the STG modification in the event of an off the pad abort or emergency reentry and subsequent land impact. This flotation collar device was developed as a direct result of MR2's overshooting the programmed impact area and the need for spacecraft stability until recovery could be affected. Paramedics of the Air Sea Rescue Service applied the collar under actual at sea conditions. In September 1960, testing of an explosive device for the emergency escape hatch was initiated. The hatch was installed on a production spacecraft in November and manually test fired to determine the blast effects on the cabin interior and structures. 
The redesigned hatch has completed all 10 qualification firings without failure, including one using a manned pressurized spacecraft. In the high altitude chamber at McDonald, spacecraft number 10 underwent the first test of Project Orbit, designed to investigate the operation of all spacecraft systems as an integrated unit on April 2, 1961. To date, over 38 hours of orbital flight simulation have been accrued. Possible systems limits have been investigated for periods in excess of nine hours on an orbital mission. Further evidence has determined that by heating the retro rockets to 90 degrees Fahrenheit prior to liftoff, electrical heating in orbit will not be necessary as previously thought. Additional research and development conducted during April, May, and June of this year has assisted the Mercury program and continued endeavors in this segment of the project are progressing now. With 13 spacecraft out of the original 20 called for under the McDonnell contract, most of the major spacecraft construction has been completed. Modifications and equipment installations are progressing on schedule. Production spacecraft 15 has completed individual system testing. The necessary engineering changes in wiring of the antenna fairing separation sensor were being made and the cabin interior was inspected. Recovery compartment equipment of number 16 was inspected and the spacecraft was in the final stages of assembly. After being changed to a manned orbital flight mission, spacecraft 17's pressure suit transducer was installed. The reaction control system components were inspected and the spacecraft entered the final steps of assembly. On capsule 18, a bevel was ground on a bushing near the bulkhead ring for fitting of the exterior shingles. Also in final assembly is spacecraft number 19. The manual control mechanism was installed in the cabin interior. The last spacecraft under construction, number 20, nears completion. Recovery compartment components have been inspected and the diode package installed. Post-flight evaluations continue to be made on spacecraft number six, used in the MA-2 flight test. Crews working around the clock have replaced reaction control system components on spacecraft number eight, and a new insulation blanket was installed after the MA-3 aborted flight. With the Mercury flight program entering its major launch phase, the delivery of spacecraft and the subsequent post-flight checks and inspections, plus data analysis of flight behavior, also has become the major portion of spacecraft manufacturing as of this date. The complexities of adapting primarily a military missile to the manned spaceflight program of Project Mercury have continued to harass the Atlas launch vehicle's reliability flight tests. During this period, major changes have been made in the fuel flow design and have greatly increased the vehicle's capabilities for use in the orbital missions of Project Mercury. An anti-vortexing plate was developed from analyzed data of previous Atlas launches showing that liquid oxygen sloshing within the booster fuselage was causing momentary bending in the rocket body. The plate is attached to the baffle shelf after inspection. With the addition of the anti-vortexing plate inside the rocket body, fuel flows through these many holes, giving a more even distribution, preventing spasmodic engine firing during liftoff and staging. Attaching holes are aligned and drilled, and the plate and shelf are integrated, ready for inspection. The MA-3 programmer was recovered from the in-flight abort more than 30 days later. It had withstood both the landing impact and the inadvertent running over by a heavy truck 